details, excuse me. Once again, good afternoon. Buenos dias. Shalom. Welcome to Corpus Christi Parish, which is the home of the Martha Mary Concerts. To explain to you what is really going on in this venue, there are three primary entities. The church, the parish, whose property this is. A, the colonial heritage, simple version, cultural heritage center, excuse me, Colonial Florida Cultural Heritage Center, I got it right this time, Father, that operates a chapel and a museum and collections and just all kinds of wonderful things on site. It is the dream of the pastor of this parish, Father Jose Luis Menendez. So, Father, where, where is he? Father Menendez. Who's welcoming people to his parish at the moment? The chapel, which is in the Spanish colonial Baroque architecture and interior, houses a large portion of one of the significant collections of Spanish colonial art in the United States. The chapel will be open after this concert, so that if you would like to take a few minutes and go over, just you can't miss it now that you know it exists. It's just on the south side of the property. And the curator, Carol Damien, and the project manager, Ray Zamora, will be over there to help guide you through. It's really worth a look on as a very short detour to the parking lot. The third entity involved in this, the site in this concert is Martha Mary Concerts that moved here three years ago. And we were welcomed incredibly by both of the other two entities and thus can bring you today's concert where we continue 18 years of a tradition of bringing world-class music at movie ticket prices. And when it's not COVID times, we even have the popcorn that's free in the form of a reception after the concert. We hope maybe by our February concert that that can continue again, but it will, can, it will revive the idea so that everyone can be part of this family, this community, sharing together the universal language of beautiful music. Which brings me very briefly to today's performance I emailed everybody I could get an email for to read in advance, but if you can look down at your programs during the performance, uh, Amanda Quist has written incredible program notes that describe threads of joy, how she came to this topic, to compose with her husband one of the pieces that's being sung, and what she tries what she does convey in the program. Just a very quick personal note. A couple weeks ago, my husband and I had a bit of a trial. Uh, we were in Europe and we got to know several emergency rooms. Uh, it all came out okay, it's, that's not a problem. But during this time, I was working with Amanda on the program, the program notes, etc. And in the midst of it, a quick anecdote. I, my husband was in the hospital. He'd had a procedure the night before. My suitcases were with American Airlines. I was wearing the clothes that I thought I was wearing on the flight back to Miami the day before, and I didn't know when I'd see the suitcase or anything else. But I called the phone number American Airlines had given me. The woman said, oh yes, I have your luggage right here. Oh yes, we'll deliver it to your hotel. The hotel I had discovered at 10 o'clock the night before. 
Of course, there's no charge. And then she said, take down this phone number. You are alone in Madrid. This is my cell phone. If you need help, call me. A total stranger offered it. It was a threat of joy that was equaled only by three hours later when Father Federico, the founder of our series, who is now in retirement working here and other places, his sister lives in Madrid and she showed up at the hospital to take care of me. I had two incredible threads of joy and I realized that what today's program is all about is something very real. And I hope that you all can feel it in this music today and that you will take it with you and feel it for many months and many years and spread the joy yourselves. But now, one of those threads of joy in my life, Father Federico Capitone, founder of our series, will say a few words. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to our church. And uh, it's wonderful to see you, wonderful to see that we are coming out of this pandemic. Uh, I have been preaching this morning in two months or three months, so I'm not going to be talking a lot. You know, priests talk a lot. <laughs> Only I want to say how many of you watched the game of the Hurricanes yesterday? <laughs> how many? How many have almost a heart attack? Okay, all right. I watch it. I am a former student of the university, and I'm very proud of being part of the university and this program, and always fan of the School of Music, Frost School of Music. So we are, we are very proud and we welcome all the students from the University of Miami, okay? I don't know if Paul is around me, Paul? Paul Posnack? Uh, Paul, supposed to... Paul, uh, aren't you going to say anything? Paul is our director of music of the program, so thank you, Paul, for everything that you do and preparing all this program for all of us. <laughs> to the committee, volunteers, also thank you. Thank you for being here and make this a success. Welcome to the students from the high school. They are in the back over there. Please raise your hands, okay, high school. And the student for our seminary, Ma Ma Mother Redeemer, I think is over there. A student, some students over there, okay? So welcome as well. Enjoy, please. Not another homily. I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you, Frost the School. God bless you.
Foster of the school year. I'm Amanda Quist. I'm the Director of Choral Activities at the Frost School of Music for the University of Miami. And we are grateful to have been invited to sing for you today in this beautiful church as part of the Martha Mary Concert Series. We've titled today's concert, Threads of Joy, the text of a poem written by Laura Foley. My husband, Tim Brent, and I found this poem and we set it to music and it formed the cornerstone for the ideas of the program. It's about acknowledging the difficulties of being human, but also the ability to see the illuminating presence of joy, as Foley puts it, threading through the darkness and pressing through. This will form the framework for our concert. You will notice five small groups throughout the concert that will perform separately from the large choir. These groups are completely student-led, and they are prepared by our five graduate students in choral conducting. Victoria Nieto, Caroline Flair, Jamie Bunce, Scott LeCoyne, and Richard Carrillo. Our next set of four pieces opens with two movements of Joel Thompson's Seven Last Words of the Unarmed. From his website, after being troubled by the onslaught of the killings of unarmed black men and finding Sheeran Bargi's Last Words Project, Joel Thompson began a compositional journey that culminated in his most significant composition to date, The Seven Last Words of the Unarmed. Using the text structure of Joseph Haydn's Seven Last Words of Christ, Joel chose seven last words from Sheeran's artwork that form the structure of this piece. We are going to perform just two of the movements for you based on the last words of two young men, Trayvon Martin, who said, what are you following me for? And Amadou Diallo, who said, Mama, I'm going to college. Our soloist for these two pieces is Richard Carrillo. We will follow these two pieces, which very much directly deal with the struggles of life, were written in 2017, with two responses that are over 400 years old. The first, the Civitas Sancti Tui by William Byrd, and the second, Lord, for thy tender mercy's sake, by Richard Ferrant. The Chivitas is a cry of anguish, a lament for the loss of home, the desolation of a community of faith. But Lord, for thy tender mercy, is a prayer for forgiveness. We're excited to perform for you today, and we hope you enjoy this next set. Thank you.
violin player and I'm a second year master's student in choral conducting. And I want to tell you a little bit about the next piece that you're going to hear. It's called Wanting Memories and it was composed by Usain Barnwell of Sweet Honey in the Rock. This is a treble a cappella ensemble of African American women. So this arrangement that you're going to hear from Vic's Voices includes vocal percussion for tenor and bass and the treble melody and harmony is retained from the original composition. Barnwell dedicated this song to her father and expressed that wanting memories is about her unconscious wish as an only child to remember her childhood when her parents passed away years later. She was digging through her attic and found bags of old photos and journals of her mom and dad, of her other family members, and of her. These memories reminded her of the joy of life and how we grow to see the beauty in the world through our own eyes. We hope you enjoy our performance of Wanting Memories.
Before we sing our last two pieces and then take a brief intermission, I wanted to just uh, acknowledge a few people. And these are some of our guests who are visiting us today as special guests of the Frost Chorale. So I'm going to call out some high school names, and then I'd love to just give a round of applause because these are all people who are involved in choir at their high schools, which means hopefully they will keep singing in college and hopefully in this choir. So we have a few, uh, and some of these students are also alums of these schools. So if I call a school and you went to the school, please raise your hand. These are, of course, just those that are, that are close by, but we uh, invited them to be our guests today. Um, and I'll read them all. Please hold your applause. Coral Reef High School, Miami Arts Studio, Robert Morgan High School, Doral Academy Prep, Boyd Anderson High School, Gulliver Prep, and the Miami Children's Chorus. Would you stand and let us recognize you? But those uh, that are from one of these schools, would you just raise your hands again so we can see who you are? So we now come to Threads of Joy, which uh, was a piece that my husband and I wrote together on our piano in New Jersey before we even knew that we might come to Miami one day. And to hear this piece come to life with these incredible singers is really a dream come true. They can do absolutely anything, and it's such a pleasure to get to stand in front of them and to hear them sing music that you wrote. It really is pretty mind-blowing. So we are going to sing Threads of Joy for you, and this is going to feature Nicole Plummer on the solo. And then we will close the first half of, half of the program with a spiritual arranged by Stacy B. Gibbs, Great God Almighty. Stacy Gibbs is from my hometown of Michigan, my home state of Michigan, from Detroit, and he's an incredible arranger. So if you are a choral person out there, check out his arrangements of spirituals. They are fabulous. The spiritual or work song is filled with the struggle and pain of suffering, but in the end, there is a turn toward hope. We'll take a brief intermission, and then we'll come back for the second half, which includes a world premiere of an arrangement of a Cuban folk song, El Manicero. So please don't miss it. We hope you'll come back, and thank you for being with us.
Good evening, everyone. Uh, are you all having a wonderful time? <laughs> You're hearing, you know, the, the premier choral ensemble of the University of Miami Frost School of Music. Uh, it's a very special pleasure to present them uh, for me personally and for us at the Martha Mary Concert Series. Uh, I've known, known the ensemble for the 30 years in which I was a faculty member at the Frost School, and I know them, uh, the quality of what they do is, is so uh, remarkable. I mean, they're, they're nationally known for their recordings, their performances around the country, and in Europe as well. And we're so privileged uh, to have been able to get Amanda Quist to come and direct the chorus. She was the chair of choral studies, the choral studies program at Westminster Choir College, which is one of the great choral study institutes in the world. So we're very lucky to have been able to have lured her away and to join the faculty. And the result, as you can see, is extraordinary. So uh, this is um, a, 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 a very special concert for all of us. And uh, I want to, to invite you to our next concerts. Dina De Rosa, um, is, uh, we're also lucky to have her. She is one of the great jazz vocalists and pianists and is coming with her trio in February, uh, the Mother's Day weekend. So this would be a wonderful time to celebrate Mother's Day. Uh, and she is, um, oh, it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> I get these things mixed up. You know, that, when you get to a certain age, these things are all, anyway. <laughs> uh, thanks for the correction. And uh, I, after that, we have our Starburst concert. Uh, presenting some of the great young uh, young musicians in South Florida. Uh, and this time it's a it's a, a little bigger event than usual because we have the three winners of the Miami Music Teachers Association Concerto Competition. Uh, they range in age from eight to seventeen, and they really really play. And they will be accompanied by the University of Miami Frost School Stamps. Quartet. Uh, this is the endowed quartet uh, of the of the first school. So that's going to be a wonderful, very very special event. And finally, we're bringing in the six vocal virtuosi of uh, from Windsor Castle in London. Uh, this is uh, the King's Singers. So it's, uh, uh, please mark on your calendars and keep the program uh, last page. Uh, prominently displayed on your coffee tables. And finally, those of you who are able and willing and are so moved, please, uh, our, our concert series, this is a community arts cultural concert series, which means that uh, obviously we do not make money on the small fees that we charge for tickets. We rely on foundations, but most importantly, on your support. We're bringing in um, artists' ensembles of national and international stature. Uh, in order to do this, we need your help. So those of you who can and feel so motivated, please make out a check to Martha Mary Concerts and give it to Julie or to Father Cap de Pont. Thank you so much. And now for the second half of the wonderful concert of the, of the, Frost, uh, the Frost Chorale. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say a special thank you to Paul Posnack, uh, director of the, this concert series, for inviting us to come and perform in this incredible space. And to Julie Williamson, who you heard speak uh, first in the beginning, for all of her assistance in putting the endless details together of this performance. Thank you, thank you. And of course to Father Federico for extending the opportunity for us to sing in this magnificent church. The Frost Chorale is going to tour to France and England this May. 
Additionally, the entirety of Frost Coral Studies will perform Gabrielle Foray's Requiem in D minor this coming April. As a preview of our spring semester, France sets the stage for this next set of pieces. We want to present the Liberame and Sanctus from Foray's Requiem. The soloist for the Liberame is someone many of you who attend church here know, Tando Mamba, who happens to be a master's student in vocal performance from Frost. Following the foray, we will hear two pieces written by Franco-Flemish composer Josquin Dupré. I also want to take this opportunity to acknowledge our incredible accompanist, Dr. Anita Castellon. She is a graduate of the Frost School. She is a wonderful artist with whom we are very lucky to collaborate.
composer Justin de Chris, who was something of a celebrity in the 16th century, and the deeply expressive chanson Mille Regrets became hugely popular across Europe and a favorite of the very troubled Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. Racked with guilt over abandoning his love, Josquin expresses a regret he feels so deeply that he worries he will waste away to nothing. is a humorous song in, uh, in the Italian uh, form. Uh, the text is in Italian, and the translation uh, briefly reads, The cricket is a good singer. He can sing very long. He sings all the time. The piece is thought of to be written for Justin's friend, Carlo Grillo, and Grillo literally means the cricket. Please enjoy this little tune, and please feel free to laugh.
pieces will conclude with a world premiere of Cuban folk song El Manicero, arranged by Tim Brent and led by graduate student Richard Carrillo. But I want to introduce Julia Izquierdo, an alum of Gulliver Prep, who is a sophomore music education student at Frost, to tell you a little bit more about this next step. Hello everyone, good evening. Um, my name is Julia Spirdo, and I'm so pleased to introduce um, this next set of music to you all. The following pieces are well-known Cuban and Venezuelan folk songs that many of you might be familiar with. The first two specifically, Son de la Loma and El Manicero, are two famous Cuban pieces that celebrate the joys of community. Music not only brings healing and joy, but can also bring attention to situations that at times seem larger than life. While presenting these two beloved pieces, I ask that you think about the people of Cuba and of people in all countries across, across the globe that have faced political oppression. Cuban culture and tradition is very much alive in Miami and plays a big role in my life as a daughter, sister, and musician. I am so lucky to live in a city that was built on the culture that is being celebrated and shared with you all tonight through music. I hope you enjoy and don't be shy to sing along.
second year DMA student in choral conducting and I'm very happy to present you the next two pieces as they are from my homeland, Venezuela. The first piece, Ayabao en Cobijado, with poetry by Alberto Arbelo Torrealba, is a Venezuelan madrigal that describes the figure of a peasant wearing a poncho who walks through cold Venezuelan plains thinking about a past love. The poem says, There goes an encobijado by the extensive treeless plains. This is how my hope goes without you within my soul. Plains and plains I cross to forget you, and after so much walking, I still love you the same. Without you within my soul, I remembered when I was going across the plains, it was raining. Followed by this piece, I will be conducting Fiesta from Visiones del Llano by Christian Grasses, which represents a modern version of the Venezuelan nationalism. This piece has no text, as the composer uses onomatopoeia to imitate the sounds of our, tra of our traditional instruments and rhythms. Please enjoy.
encapsulate the theme of the entire program. Sure, on this shining night, the American composer Morton Lordson sets this well-known poem by James A.G. that reflects both sadness and joy. And our musical journey will close with a resolution and a challenge to us all. Kalinda, written by Frost School alum Sidney Guillaume, in the composer's liner notes, he emphasizes that this piece is a celebration of all that is joyful in creation. In the Haitian composer's own words, what does the song Kalinda mean? Humans can make wonders and even be proud of their spectacular accomplishments. But in reality, everything comes from the creator. All talents and all treasures are divine blessings that must be used for the benefit of all. Before we close, I do want to again thank Paul Posnack, the director of the concert series, to, for asking us to sing today, Julie Williamson for all of her help, and to Father Federico for extending us this opportunity. I also want to just acknowledge uh, in the Frost Chorale some, some people who are leaders. So if you are an undergraduate section leader, would you just step forward and we would just like to acknowledge you. Avery Chapman, Julia Izquierdo. Justin Braun, and Chris Alfonso. And if you are about to go into the world of student teaching, which means soon into the world of teaching, meaning this is your last semester at the University of Miami for now, would you step forward and we want to acknowledge you? because some of you are buried within the choir a little bit, but I want to acknowledge our five uh, choral conducting uh, teaching assistants. They are assisting us with everything, um, and this is Scott LaCoyne, Jamie Bunce, and Richard Carrillo. I'd like to thank those three first. Wave your hands if you go. And the teaching assistants for the Frost Chorale are Caroline Clara and Victoria Nieto. Thank you so much for everything you do. Thanks again for being here with us, and to all of my faculty colleagues, I want to just acknowledge that all of what we do is intertwined with everything you do, and to thank you for the incredible teaching that you provide to our students, and to Dean Shelley Berg and all of the administrators at the Frost School who make it possible for us to sing together safely. Singing with a mask is not that fun, and uh, but we've managed to do it for the past year, and we can't wait till they can come off. But in the meantime, we're at least glad to be singing together. That means a lot to us. And so again, thank you for being here. We hope you will follow Frost Choral Studies on Facebook and Instagram for more information. And thank you for being here. We'll close with Sure on the Shining Night and Kalinda. <laughs>